During this series, Winning, we made some rather bold claims. We've been saying out of our mouths collectively, here it is, it's winning season. That's a bold thing to state right there, ain't it? It's winning season. I was watching ESPN this week, and I'm a huge Coach Prime and Colorado fan. Been following them since Jackson State. I'm a huge fan, not just Jack State. I was following him when he had the TV show, uh, Dion's Family Playbook. I was following him when he opened up Prime Prep. Why you think I named it Rock City Prep? I just always loved how he loved his boys, how he loved young men, how he loved people, how he loved football. I love Coach Prime, and Coach Prime has put the world on his back. He's called all his haters to notice why PMJ, he started out 3-0. That's critical. He starts out 3-0, and and Coach Prime does something that I am personally experiencing in my life, and I want to prophetically declare you're going to start experiencing in your life. What's that, Pastor Mike? You are about to win in such a way that the people who are trying to fake like they're happy for you will no longer be able to fake it because your winning is making people uncomfortable. I'm preaching the three of y'all already and you missed it. See, Wes, they didn't mind when you opened up one shop. They didn't mind when you got one W. They didn't mind when you got one promotion. But when it turns into the season where every time you turn around, he keeps on blessing, it's going to make people who don't want you to win uncomfortable. And I come to make an announcement, whether you like it or not, you about to be real uncomfortable around me in this season because I am allergic to mediocrity. Here's my declaration. Even if I took an L last month, it's still my winning season. I, I, I don't know who I'm preaching to. And death and life lie in the power of your tongue. You have not. Because you ask not. Death, life, power, the tongue, have not because you ask not. Which means maybe you're losing because you won't say nothing. And if you say something, you might just see something. And I wish I had a circle of people. Is this my winning circle? See, if I was around a lot of haters, I would have to be cute and quiet. And could they tell you, watch this, when people, when haters and people who can't handle you winning tell you to be humble, what they're really telling you is stay small. Michael. Okay, I, I want to free you. If Jesus is the ultimate winner, if Jesus, I'm finna run, is the ultimate winner, why would he allow them to prophesy his success before he did it? Y'all miss what I just said. Jesus sits down, D, with his winning circle. And tells them, I'm finna be crucified, but on the third day, I'm gonna get back up again. In other words, part of being a winner is having the faith to tell people what you're gonna do before you even do it. Because it reveals if the people which you really believe, you actually gonna do it. So I need you to tell everybody in your circle, you know I'm getting money this year, right? You know my family gonna be whole this year, right? You know my body going to be healed this year, right? You know my business going to triple this year, right? You know my children going to college this year, right? See, the reason you ain't shouting is because you really don't believe. But if you really believe, you ought to type and shout, it's my winning season. <laughs> winning. Winner said what? During the winning season, let's put this in your notes. Winning season is when, this is good, I behave like what I'm believing for. I <laughs> behave like, Michael, what I'm believing for. Winning season is when I behave like, mama, what I'm believing for. Or in other words, my actions match my confessions. I, I want to say that better. 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 Yeah, yeah. Winning season is when my current action matches my future position. Did you catch that? 
winning thing. This is why people can't stand you and you don't have nothing. Okay, all right, all right. Who remember your raggedy car phase? Anybody remember your raggedy car phase? Who remember your raggedy car phase, but you was treating it like it was a Bentley coupe? Remember that? It was raggedy. Remember, I, I, I'm going to take you way back. I ain't talking to all y'all who press a button and your windows come down. I'm talking about when you had to do this. <laughs> who remember that? You had to do this. I ain't talking to y'all who press a button or you open the door, but you had to roll the window down. Put your arm on the other side of the door. Hey, boy, did you open it like that? You remember that? But remember what frustrated your circle was the fact that they would get in your car eating. And you would look at them and say, don't be eating all that in my car. Then they would look at your car. Like, it's fries on the floor right now. Yeah, but them my fries. You ain't finna be treating my car like it ain't nothing. Then, I'm finna show you how your haters are not pathetic, they're prophetic. They would look at you and say, you acting like. This a mistake. You acting like. This a, you acting. See, that's the winning mindset. It's when I behave like what I know I'm becoming. That was heavy and y'all missed that. Winning season is when I behave like what I know I'm becoming. Tomorrow, I need you to behave like. Yeah, when you go to work tomorrow, stop acting like your coworkers. Michael, you be, watch this. If you behave like where you are, you will always be where you are. But if you behave like where you're going, you will eventually be where you're going. So since where I am is not where God is taking me, I might as well act like the future me versus the present. You have to have the audacity to serve the world at large and notice that the circumstances and situations and habits that have limited you are coming to an end. I want to declare that you have to have a mindset to know that the circumstances and situations and habits that have limited you are coming to an end. That there was a time when we'd only attempt what had already been done. But now we're realizing that you can't be placed in a box. We've come together as a church and decided that we don't do boxes. We're winners. We don't live in generational boxes, religious or traditional boxes, boxes of mediocrity, poverty, lack, or even self-inflicted. In fact, many of us are realizing just how much more we are capable of now that we realize it's our winning season. And I'm going to say this, and you don't have to say, man, but there's a couple thousand people watching online, Leslie, and tell them I'm up, that they can realize right now there's more. Y'all yeah. don't hear me. No, 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 no. I, Carl, I'm not trying to be funny, but there's more. There, 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 there's more. No, Michael. No, there, there's there's more. I, I'm going to keep saying it. No, there's more. It's nothing deep, but I'm just, there's more. No, I know, no, there's more. No, this is why you're frustrated because the winner in you, it's like, why did we settle right here? Michael, there's more. I must keep saying, there's more. That's the message right there. Pastor Mike, I need some deep. Okay, cool. There's more. No, Pastor Mike, no, no, you know, no, there's more. No, you don't have to be happy just to be a part of it. There's a winner in you. There's a champion in you that if you put in the work, if you remain faithful, you may not get where you want to get, but you'll be further than where you are right now. There's more. I, I, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you want to know what I discovered? You want to know what I discovered? There's more. There's more. No, I've been telling y'all, no, there's more. There, that, that, no, God's blessed us with this facility, and I'm waiting on these inspections, and I'm waiting on stuff to get passed, and I'm waiting on this, and I'm waiting on that. But while I'm waiting, 
Yeah, we already walk. It's 96 dorms across the street. 96 dorms, 96 bedrooms. Each bedroom got a full bath in it and all that stuff. It was dorms, and I'm sitting there looking at it, and I done already started walking, already started claiming, already started positioning. You want to know why? There's more. Y'all don't hear me. Found out it's a house connected to this property, too, that used to be connected to the property. And I sat there. We're running the stuff. And me and Tip done walked through the house. Now, pause. I want to parenthetically digress. She's the flipping female. I am not the flipping male. I was scared. We walked through the house. It was all type of stuff. In it. it was 75 cats in the house. All type of stuff going on. They walking us through the house. You go downstairs, downstairs. Look like a dungeon, like where they keep people. I'm telling you. And the, they took a, come on downstairs. No, I'm from Sleep. We don't go downstairs. You ain't watch no scary movies. No, we don't go downstairs. We let you go downstairs. And we going down the steps and tip because she the flipping female walking down the steps all bold. She looks back up to me and said, no, we're going to leave the door open. Ask me what I did. I closed the door. Since you want to be bold, go on down there with them doors closed in. No, but I'm walking through there, and we asking them what this costs and how this works. Then we got in the golf cart and rolled back to the church, and I said, you know what? There's more. Y'all missed that. Y'all miss what I just said. No, I'm not finna settle. If my God is able to do exceeding and abundant above what I ask or think, that means the moment I thought about it, it became too No, you ain't got to like me. I just need a hundred folk in the comments to drive our haters crazy and seven of y'all ain't here to just shout, there's more. I just need you to text your whole family group chat. No, it's more than what we're doing right now. There's more. No, we getting ready to go see what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. You ain't got to receive it, but I receive it for me and my family. You ought to declare there's more. Thank you, Jesus. There's more. And that's why I'm trying to get my boys to realize that, no, baby, there's more. There's more. It's a leader in you. I, I, I love the fact that you scored a touchdown this past week, but the game was tight. You weren't vocal enough. I ain't being hard on you, baby boy, but there's more in you. No, no, no. The touchdown is cool, but when life gets thick, come on, team, let's go. Come on, get your mind. Pick your head up. Pick your head up. Let's go, guys. I'm t- there's more. Oh, my son, Michael, I'm so proud of him. And he's not picking up driving as quick as Xander is. Xander just picked it up real quick. But conversely, there are things that Michael do very quick that Xander don't get. So when it comes like that, baby, don't stay positive, baby boy. There's more. I only thought if I was going to be an athlete in high school, I was going to play football, basketball, baseball, or run track. I didn't know that there was such thing as bowling teams and so-and-so, so-and-so. So now when I see my son on the bowling team and he's going to practice and doing all that, he's showing me. That there, I had placed him in a box that if you're going to be an athlete, you either had to play football, basketball, baseball. Then all of a sudden he goes to a bowling tryout and makes a team every year. He's showing me that there's more. This is why many of you, I'm so excited that your last relationship was as crazy as it is. Because sometimes God allows you to go all the way down because he's getting ready to send you somebody to show you. I'm preaching whether you receive it or not, that there's more. I'm trying to show you right now that if you're going to become what God has called you to be, you have to embrace the the fact that there's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. And that's a simple phrase, but it's so powerful. There's more. There's more. There's more. Now, I want to pause and parenthetically digress and call a paradigmatic shift. Paradigmatic shift, paradigm, a thinking shift in your life right here. You ready? All right. All right. Who need God to come through for you? Thank you. He didn't run out. Some of y'all treating God like how he came through last time was all he had in the bank. Michael, Michael, so I come to make an announcement when it comes to God, there's more. And my grace is sufficient, which means so, so, so you don't get sufficient. I, I forgot our church on 280 now, all y'all rich. So God bless you, all y'all rich since we on 280. I'm from Inslee. I've been to the ATM before. <laughs> 
right. No, no. See, y'all don't even check y'all balances. What my people who check your balances before you get that quick 200? Thank you so much. Bougie folk. See how they looking at us right now? Check your balances. You just get the money out. No. Because one time I went and pressed that $200 and it came back with a notice. No. Have you ever been looking down where the money come up? Then all of a sudden you have to look back up at the screen and it says insufficient. <laughs> in Sufficient. Can I ask you a question? If the ATM says insufficient, is it saying it don't have money? Or you don't have money? And many of you are putting a box on God or a cap on what God can do. Because your account is insufficient. Heaven ain't insufficient. If you got denied, it's for two reasons. Either one, it wasn't your time, or two, God knew if he gave it to you, it would kill you. But just because you got declined don't mean God will get declined because when it comes to God, there is more. Watch this now. Aquariums all over the world have been marveling at one comparison. Aquariums all over the world have been marveling recently at one comparison. What is that? Put this in your notes. I want you to research when you get home. Wild white sharks. Wild, this is good, Mace. White sharks. Wild white sharks. That's critical. Wild white sharks. Why is that important, PMJ? They have been marveling that the average size of a captive white shark it's four feet long. Now, my son Mace is the, is the information guy in our family. He knows all random facts, okay? White sharks in captivity. White sharks in, zoo, in aquariums grow, I'm finna run, four feet tall. They caught some white sharks in the wild. And all of them grew at an average of eight feet tall. I don't think you heard what I just said. I'm sorry, long. So the ones in aquarium that was raised in aquariums only grew to be four feet. Those that were raised in the ocean grew to be eight feet, which proves staying in a box caused the sharks to settle for half of their potential. And what I'm trying to get you to realize is maybe your money ain't as long as it could be. Your favor ain't working like it should be. Your intelligence isn't growing at the pace it needs to grow. It's because your circle and your environment has placed you in a box. And so what do we see? They grow according to the environment. Boss man, what's my job as your pastor? Enlarge the environment. Why do you think, why do you think as a church, half of what I show you, not even church? Why do you think I sit in staff meetings and fuss for a year? Like, hey, no, stop. That, that's cool. No, no. Yeah, I thank you for that. But who doing something outside the building? You'll be surprised how many dads walked up to me now. I love Deacon Karan. Uh, and he says to me, he says to me, Man, I saw you coaching your son flag football team. I'm going to go coach Carson's soccer team. Now, Karan from J.O. <laughs> to everybody watching from around the world, you're like, okay, what's J.O.? Let's just call it. Karan was raised in the hood. Okay? We don't play soccer in the hood. Karan goes to be a coach of something he has never done. But the bond he has not built with his daughter will never be forgotten. If I only preached about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he would have grew to half. <laughs> this is why so many church leaders are dying. This is why so many church pastors are miserable. This is why so many gifted people are lost. It's because church for the last 50, 100 years have been placing us in a box called church. They've been making sure you're a good minister, good elder, good deacon, good preacher, good choir member, good usher, good volunteer. When that's only four feet. (laughs) 
So you mastered prayer, but you broke his head. You mastered singing a song, but when you go home, your marriage horrible. It's because we placed you in this box called church. And we never showed you the full potential. Here it is. You ain't got to say amen. That you can be saved and paid. That you can be blessed and a businesswoman. That you can operate in the political sector, but the political mess don't get inside of you. I am trying to tell you that when I tell you it's your winning season, what I am telling you unbeknownst to you is that there's another four feet in you. Michael, there's more. You ain't got to say amen. I'm going to say amen to myself. I came to declare there's more. There's another level of business in me, another level of intuition in me, another level of grace on my life. There is That's what I'm trying to get you to realize. You're not going to cap me. You're not going to cap me. You're not going to cap me. No, you're not going to cap me. Well, you're a pastor. You put, no, I am a pastor. But there's more in me too. Y'all Negroes ain't going to make me be half of what I can be while I tell you, you can be all that you need to be. Well, maybe you need to stop. Maybe you need to put, you so busy putting two and two together. Well, you may need to put five and five together and ten to your business. Michael, there's more in me, baby. I'm going to be a pastor, an entrepreneur, a great daddy, a great coach. I'm going to be all that God called me to be. And I expect you to be all God called you. You ought to just high five five people and stop. There's more. More. You ought to type more. More joy. More peace. More favor. More grace. More finances. More property. More joy. More, 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 more. Jesus. If God can do more, sit down, y'all scare me. The question ain't if God, I done got excited. There's more, bro. I wanna, I, I, I wanna, yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. I wanna take the road less traveled. I wanna stand and publicly repent to every current volunteer and every past ministry working volunteer because we did what we saw our predecessors do. You would say in the past, well, I'm getting ready to go on vacation. Then we would guilt you into not missing church. Well, what you mean you're not going to be at church? I'm sorry. But now that them little boys keep in mind, when I started Rock City Church, Mason was just born. I started in 09. He's born that June. I've been going so hard for Rock City. He's now 14. You want to know what I've discovered? There was more. I've never been to a professional football game and just sat in the stands and said, My, Mason, look at Atlanta. Because every Sunday I was standing right here. And if I ain't careful, I'm going to go to sleep and wake up. And he's going to be going to college. I'm going to go to sleep and wake up. And Mike going to be 27. Go to sleep and wake up and Xander going to be 33. Then I'm going to call him one day and say, bud, you ain't answering my calls. Then he's going to have to be testifying about me. So you want to know what? There's more. I'm easily, this is not embellishment. I lost in the last 45 days, close to $300,000. One tour would have paid me $210,000, and there were six gigs that when came up would equal to other $300,000. And everybody in my circle is now questioning, do I really want this? Because they don't think that my excuse, that Miles plays flag on Saturday is real. 
This is Mason's first year of high school. He's in a locker room hearing about stuff that he's never heard about before. He's around people now that I got to be, I want to be home when he get there. As soon as they walk through the door, I want to be able to ask Mike, what happened today? And what I've discovered is, who cares if you get enough money to give them everything you think they need when all they really needed was you? There's more. And I know you chasing the bag. I know you chasing the bag. I know you, I, and I, want, I don't want to doubt, money's important. Let's not play that game. Money is important. I didn't turn it down because I'm rich. Not rich. Yet. Oh, because it's coming. In Jesus' name. But I believe that God tests you. I believe that... Oh, there it is, yeah. I believe that the 21st century Job test... Ain't him removing the heads to destroy stuff. It's him moving the heads to show you stuff. So what the devil does is God, he tells, I believe the devil tells God, yeah, they only love you because you keep blessing them. I bet you won't remove the hedge. And God says, boom, hedge removed. So what the devil says, they already read about Job, so I ain't going to make them lose stuff. I'm going to overexpose them. I'm going to show them more money than they ever seen and see if they'll pick it. I'm going to show them more stuff than they've ever experienced and see if they leave. The question ain't if God can do it. The current question in your life is, do you believe? Michael, Mark chapter 6 verse 5, and because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them, here it is, except place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Can you put that in your notes? All right, because I got a problem. I see contradiction in this particular text. Quran, I see a contradiction. What's the contradiction, Joe? Here's the contradiction. It says he, could, he couldn't do any. But then the next line says, but a few. All right, so some of y'all are going to look like the Bible was a hypocrite. I'm going to free you real quick. You ready? I want to free you real quickly. Who done ever said you ain't got no money? But. <laughs> What's my personal? <clears throat> I just shifted the mamba mode. <clears throat> What's my personal belief of this text? When he said he couldn't do any. Then he turns around and says he could only do a few. My personal belief is, had the corporate body believed, whoever wanted it could have got it. But because as a corporate body they didn't believe, only the few who did got it. Kim, y'all don't like me today. Y'all don't like me, but I got to free you real quickly. I want to say, because what happens was, can you put this in your notes? They put limits on Jesus. Now, most, theolo most theologians believe it wasn't that he couldn't do miracles. He chose not to do it. I'm finna scare you. Did God not move in your life because he couldn't? No. He's able to do. What does that mean then? He chose. I went to the Revolt Conference on last week, and I'm the only gospel artist there. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Everybody's there. Carisha, please. Uh, all, the arp, all the rappers. Uh, I'm sitting right next to Jim Jones. Everybody, everybody's there. I'm the only gospel artist. I didn't even know what I was coming to properly. I thought it was a gospel fest, and I was one of the gospel artists. I get there, and they say, no, we got this whole warehouse. We put the LED screens in it and the sound system. You got an hour to do whatever you want. I don't even have a band. I had a couple tracks, three singers. I said, whatever I want? They said, yeah. Whatever I want? They said, yeah. I sing, I got it. All right. You know what they did? They're like, hey, hey. Then I said, and it's going to be. So now they're rocking. And the moment big went off. 
I start preaching. And in the whole room, all you see is tears flowing. You see people who don't need nothing physically realizing they need everything spiritually. And somebody inboxed me saying, with you being a man of God and a gospel singer, why would you go over there? Can I ask you a question? Why would light stay in light? Or does light go to darkness so that darkness can cease and see? There's more! And you want to know what I discovered? Sadly, there was more belief there than in the pews on Sunday morning. No. You really want to know the truth? You really want to know the truth? I'd rather preach in a club than a church. I'd rather be at the club on Saturday night and I wish the DJ would stop the music full dancing and say, all right, y'all, for the next 15 minutes, it's Pastor Mike. Because you know what I discovered? Church folk make me so sick because you already know the playbook. Let me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Who's ever did some type of diet and you dropped a whole lot of weight quick? Anybody? Diet, you ever did whatever, HCG diet, Atkins diet, whatever it is. All right, but then you gained all your weight back, right? So let me free you. But then you say it, it's cool, I'm going to just do the diet again. And the diet never worked. You want to know why? Because you mastered how to cheat it. I, I was on this diet about six years ago called HCG diet, all right? You take these drops, you eat 500 to 1,000 calories a day, and you just keep dropping weight. Only problem is once you stop, it comes back, okay? So what happened was I go, I drop 35 pounds quick. You can't tell me nothing. Boom. 20 days, I dropped 30 plus pounds, all right? I'm like, oh, that's killing. A whole 40 of them come back. I don't even know where the other 10 came from. All 40 of them come back. I tell myself, me and the staff did it. I said, no, I'm just getting back on. You did it too, too. everybody. So I'm, I'm going to just put my business out there. Everybody business is getting put out there. All right, so, so, so hear me. So we do the diet, right? So then I say, it's cool. I'm going to just do the diet again. But the problem was we figured out how to cheat. That if I did wrong on Tuesday, I just go super hard on Wednesday and Thursday and then make up for it. You know what I discovered? I got caught in a cycle. Because I would gain five on Tuesday, drop five Wednesday, Thursday. But because I knew how to cheat, it killed the purpose of the diet. And that's why so many Christians are obese, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. It's because you know how to cheat. You already know that if you fast, you're going to come out. So instead of you now having... Uh, uh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. D, it's called um, stuff you do every day. Say it again. Not routine, it's a spiritual word I want. This, so so because, because you don't have spiritual disciplines. So what happens now is instead of you praying every morning and doing your best every day, you limit the power of God to miracles only. So now you only fast when you want something. You only pray when you need something. You come to church different when you're going through something. Y'all ain't got it like me. I, I'm in the wrong church. I'm in the wrong church. And what I'm trying to show you is, if it's your winning season, fix your belief. I... Bruh, bruh, I personally believe there's more. I believe that. I believe that. Physically, I'll never be where I am if I don't humble myself and reach out to those who can help me and say, hey, I need help. See, having a winning season means having a winning circle. Now I want to take this a step further. But there are certain people who are not in your circle who need to be. You're not going to put them in. They're going to have to earn their way in. And the way they're going to earn their way in 
maybe by offending you. No, no, no. Like it or not, I need Wes. I need my. I need somebody to walk up to me and say, "Hey, Pastor, I love you, but with all you're doing, you know, you're probably gonna die early if you don't stop right." How you preaching this fast, doing all this stuff, doing all this music, running around, and you ain't even in shape? Now my feelings gonna be hurt, but what I do next determines if I win. Let me pause. It determines if I have longevity in my winning seat. Y'all don't. I'm laughing because it's the off-season, so every basketball player in the NBA is posting their off-season workouts. Everybody in the gym working right now, shooting threes, doing everything. Oh, everybody on, on, on Instagram, oh, he putting in work. Oh, so-and-so putting in work. You want to know what I'm laughing at? LeBron James spends, this is estimated, over a million dollars a year on his body. Not just weights. He got all type of machines, different massages, nutritionists. Because he realizes that, yes, I can put muscle on, but there's a certain level of care that has to be placed on my body, watch this, so my winning season can be prolonged. Bill Belichick is an incredible coach, right? He's had some off years. Andy Reid with the Chiefs is now looking like a genius because of Mahomes, them right? Who remember when he was with the Eagles? Stinking it up. Remember that? Mike Tomlin, would you call him an incredible coach? Is he better than Belichick? Who got the most Super Bowl rings? Belichick. Who got the most losing seasons? Belichick. Mike Tomlin has never in his career, in the NFL, had a losing season. Ever. He has not always won the ship. But when the season was over, he always could deem it a win. The paradigm shift I'm experiencing right now is that every winning season does not end with a ring. For people who don't understand sports, let me make that make sense. Just because I don't win the championship don't mean it wasn't a winning season. Okay, let me make that make sense. Some of you are believing God for this one job that's going to flip everything. I want to tell you, you may not get it. And I also want to look at you and say that if in December... You look at your year and say it was a loss because you didn't get that job. When you killed every other thing, you are viewing your season the wrong way. Michael. It's my winning season, which means God is ready to do more. I got to go. Y'all tired of me. I got to go. Y'all tired of me. Give me seven minutes. Now unto him. Who is able, Michael, to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within who? A recent Gallup survey found that 75%, 75, I want you to listen clearly and I'm going to send you home. I know you're tired of me. 75% of Americans believe that they are not reaching their full potential. This means that three out of every four people wake up every day and wrestle with the tension between possibility and reality. Can you put that in your notes if you don't mind? Somebody in the comments, please put that in the comments for me. Possibility and reality. Possibility and reality. Many of us are frustrated and some of us are even losing faith because we feel like we haven't reached our full potential. I want to make a statement that I believe some people may call me a heretic for saying, but it's my personal opinion. I'm going to stand ten toes down on it, okay? Jesus did not reach his full potential. Pastor Mike, what do you mean? He's on a cross, right? He says out his mouth, I could call down a legion of angels, which means in him is the potential to call every angel from heaven to earth and kill everything moving. Yet he suppressed it. For his purpose. 
His potential meant he could have lived, but his purpose required him to die. Had he not embraced his purpose and only held on to his potential, we wouldn't have a right to the tree of life. So what am I trying to get you to realize? It's possible that we haven't reached our full potential because we're pursuing what we were created for without pursuing who we were created by. I believe Jesus embraced not his full potential, but his purpose so that you could embrace your full potential. Pastor Mike, put scripture on it. I decrease. I want to ask you a question. Are you chasing what you were created for more than you are chasing who you were created by? You have to really know me to know that my best preacher ain't on the stage. I love being in it. I, I just love just helping people. I, I, I come a lot. I, hear me. We were done at Revolt. I was outside praying for people if they show you the clip. Outside. I'm outside praying for people. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. This is what I like to do. I'm, they took me to one room that my team couldn't come with me, and I don't like name drawing, but everybody's in the room. I'm, I, I loved it. Man, what's up, man? Are oh, you good? Yeah, man. I, come talk, man. How, how's God doing? Yeah. The other person, oh. <laughs> I got to find a, the PG-13 way to say this. You the Negro from TikTok. Man, your sermon be going viral every other day. My old lady sent me your video. Hey, hey, this the whatchamacallit from TikTok. So I'm just standing like, <laughs> and my publicist sitting there like, oh, like, he, like Von finna look, because he's like, you're a pastor. I didn't know whether to jump. I was like, no, let them be them. Let them be them. Let them be them. Let them be them. No, Pastor Mike, you need to put your cigarette. Like, 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 hey, I'm not trying. Jesus, if I force them to stop what they're doing, they may stop listening. So part of my purpose is being able to go in environments that may be uncomfortable, but I remain me. No, I stood in circles. Well, hey, how you doing? They, they pass. They try to pass it to me. I'm in a circle. Like, hey, how you doing, man? No, so I'm telling you, man, here's what God doing. I, mean, I want to tell you, I'm proud of you. No, I'm, I'm good. And see what God's doing, and he's getting ready to move like never before, yada, yada, yada. And he's going to do so-and-so, so-and-so. No, I'm, I'm good. You know, and, and God's going so-and-so, and he's, and he's doing so-and-so. And it's because and, and, and there's more. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? This good. If the building caught on fire, who all would run out? Tell the truth. Right, let's, let's be honest. If that screen exploded and a big fire broke loose, tell the truth. Who would run out? Do I have any firemen in here? Firemen? Any police officers? You want to know what we're going to do? We running out. I am not finna stand here and say, Father God, in the name of Jesus. What the, my, my, my shout out. Come on, intercessors, pray. Come on, intercessors, pray. Come on, intercessors, pray. Fire cease. Fire. 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 No. The moment I. Why, Pastor Mike, putting out fires in the natural ain't my job. Watch this. But the moment the fire department show up, they already got on the full arm of God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They already dressed for their assignment. So while we're running out, they're doing what? That's my assignment. Nah. Point me to one of the most dangerous, uncomfortable environments and situations. Let me run in. Yeah. Let me run in. Why, PMJ? Because I understand who created me. And because I understand who created me, I now embrace what he created me for. I got to get y'all out of here. 
I got to get y'all out. I got so much more. I got seven pages, but I got to get y'all out of here. I'm going to stop right here. Now, <laughs> who else be in church when somebody say, take your time? I'm like, shut up. Shut up. What's wrong with you? Take your time. Take your time. It's been good. You ain't got nothing by now. You ain't going to get it. We ain't got to stay here because you ain't ready to go home. <laughs> Let's do this. Do this. Play song. Play song. I'm going to stop. Now unto him who is able. I'm going to do this one point. Paul makes it clear that we serve. Can you put this in your notes? A God of ability. A God of ability. See, and this is good, champ. This is good. This is so good. Some of you are daring to be great. Throw your hand up. I was watching Canelo and Charlo last night, and I'm personally proud of Charlo. I thought he fought a great fight. You don't play with Canelo. That ain't something you play with. That ain't, you don't play boxing. Trust me, you don't play boxing. And Canelo's strong. Charlo jumped two weight classes just to fight him. I want you to really think about that. Like, so Charlo jumped two levels. Like, you know what I'm saying? Jump. That's like a, to me, it's not a good analogy, but that's like a high school all-star challenge in an NFL Hall of Famer. Like, it's, it's too class. He skipped this level and went straight to this level, and he fought hard. He did his best, didn't come out with the win. But he said something in his, his speech after he lost. He said, man, I'm still the undisputed champion at my weight class. He was like, I was daring to be great. I ain't have nothing to lose. And when he said it, I was like, how many nights have I stayed up depressed because I took a loss daring to be great? Didn't nobody teach you how to be a wife? You daring to be great. Fellas, didn't nobody teach you how to be a father, how to be an entrepreneur? You're daring to be great. Which means there are going to be some losses. But we turn those losses into lessons. The God of ability, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, I may run and God is able. Look at this scripture. I'm scared to read it. And God is able to bless you abundantly. See, that was enough to tell the whole church up right there. God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, I got to run. I, I. God is able. So, so watch this. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, but then Ephesians said, now unto him who is able. But then Paul says it like this in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, and God is able to bless you. How? abundantly so that in all things and at all times having all that you need yeah you caught it thank you so much ma'am for catching it thank you so much you will abound look at the next translation that's going to bless your life next translation nlt same scripture and god will generously provide all how are y'all sitting in here 1022. How are y'all sitting in here like God does this to give you a prophetic word that can shift your life? I'm going to say it again. And God will generously provide 1022. All you need. Then you will always have everything you need. Michael, plenty left over. Y'all too quiet. I need somebody in the comments to just type, I receive that. I receive that. I'm going to read it again. And God will generously provide all you need. Period. Stop right there. That's enough to shout. That's enough to shout. But he comes back and says, then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over. Watch this. Watch this. To share with others. I mean, it's, I mean, I got five kids, right? And I know I talk about the top three boys. They, they're just my heart. They're like, everything in life, I mean this, hands down. If one of them walked up to me today and said, Dad, I love you, man, but church and all is just too much, I promise you, I will go get a regular job and stop doing everything I'm doing. Just for them. I mean this. That's who I am. They mean the world to me. You hear me? And they're not perfect. They're not perfect. They cuss. Right? 
Come on now. Because like I, 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 I say this to you because I'm so, I'm so scared that church makes us think certain people are perfect without flaws. I'm y'all pastor, not them. So you know, they're not finna walk around with the pressure I have. We're not doing that. So, so we talk about life. They win, they lose, good days, bad days. You got what I'm saying? But what I'm excited about seeing them develop with, y'all laughing at me? <laughs> oh, it's, it makes it crazy. Mason did it, didn't it? In, in the black? Yeah, exactly. So, so hear me. Here, here's, what's, here's what I love about them. I'm seeing God show up in them. Seeing it. When I got, when I got, and they don't even know this, when I got some of their teammates' parents walk up to me and say, hey, I just want to tell you, you raised a good son. My son didn't have no money at lunch at school, and Mason just gave him to do something and go get with you. I'm like, all right, I said, thank you so much. I'm, I'm starting to see the God in them. And they're going to they get their journey and they're going to become who they are. But, but what I want them to realize is, this is so rich. There is no life outside of him. And I love what 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it's the same scripture, the same scripture, the same scripture. Look at the message version. And God will pour on the blessings, and God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything. Y'all don't know when to shout. And everything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done. He's the God that may be the topic for the day. More. He's the God of more. And hear me when I say this, man. I want to encourage each and every one of you watching from all over the world and those of you in this room. There's more. I'm not telling you to go out there tomorrow and go finance a better car. That's not what I'm saying. Because we'll make stuff mean what we do. I'm not telling you to go open up two businesses. Now, there's more. No. What I'm saying is, the first more you should pursue, it's more of Him. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to our own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge. Then what is He going to do? He's my GPS. And I know you've been dealing with struggle, and I know sometimes life is difficult, and I'm praying for you. My father has a surgery tomorrow. I want y'all to pray for him. And I got different church leaders going through certain things. I got one lady on our intercessory team finna bury her mother. Life is difficult. You know? It's difficult. I just don't want us to become distracted. And I don't want us to convince. I don't want us to allow a bad day to convince us that we have a bad life. Today wasn't good. Say it, accept it, move on from it. You know? God, I personally repent publicly on behalf of not just me, but all those who follow me for the seasons of our lives where we allow our failure to change our actions. God, I pray right now that you would help us to understand because sometimes in our ignorance, we treat every loss like it's a whooping from you. God, there are certain times in our lives that when stuff don't go right, because we know the mess we're doing secretly or we know what we didn't do that you told us to do, we treat every ale like a whooping from God when sometimes it's just life. So God, in this moment, I ask that you create in us a clean heart. God, I ask right now that you restore to us the joy of our salvation. God, I pray right now that every need is met. We got a lot of them. But God, not just our needs, I ask that you provide all our wants. 
now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. God, you said that if we would just humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways and you would hear from heaven and heal the land. God, I ask right now that you heal our personal lands. Heal the lands, God. Lands represent our territory. Heal our territories, our addresses, our homes, our place of businesses, our place of employment, our schools, our lives. God, I understand that there's more. I know, God, sometimes it feels like it's not worth it. God, truthfully speaking, God, I sometimes even say to myself, I'm making all these sacrifices. Is it even worth it? God, I bite my tongue a lot. When it's a lot, I sometimes want to say, I walk away feeling weak. But God, I know in my heart it's going to be worth it. You told me in the scripture, if I be still, let the Lord fight my battles. Victory shall be mine. So God, to the person who's being obedient, but the world is calling it weak, to the person who's being obedient, but they're calling for them to walk in pride, I speak supernatural recompense. That God, you're getting ready to restore to them everything that was taken, everything that was lost, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God, I pray for supernatural influence. That if they never sit on a board, that if they never sit in a council, if they never sit on a throne, they'll always have the heart and the ear of the people. That's influence. God, I thank you in advance. And I speak 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 over everybody's life. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands, Rock City Church. I love you. Come on, you can do better than that. Clap your hands. Did you get anything out of that today? So I'm excited. I got one, two, three, four, five. I got six more pages of notes that we'll pick up with next week. So Devo Energy, I know y'all like doing your notes off my sermon notes. Y'all all all gonna have to figure that out this week. Do not start preaching my sermon. You gotta be careful with Devo Energy. They be getting my sermon notes sometimes. So no, man, I'm excited about it. I really believe that God's getting ready to do more in us and through us that's so important and i'm just excited about what god is doing y'all y'all pray for us here's a good place to clap uh we passed our fire inspection y'all that's a good place yep yep we passed it so we have one more if i'm not mistaken one more inspection on the inside to do we still have the parking lot and all this other stuff but one more uh inspection on the inside uh, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I can't wait till we can have church. I can't wait till I can tell everybody it's on. I can't wait till I can send that date out. Uh, but I just firmly believe I'm excited because we're doing everything the right way. And I always, uh, four feet, eight feet. Don't ever forget I told you that. Grow to eight feet. Grow. Expand. Uh, I want to always show you because you're going to be an entrepreneur. And I'm discovering as a pastor, I don't just preach with my voice. I preach with my actions. So I pray that an entrepreneur can see, well, Pastor Mike took a whole step back for five months. He didn't even have physical church to make sure he did everything fiscally and responsibly. So there's nothing wrong with me doing my business out of my home for six months. Nothing wrong. I, I love trying to be balanced when I show you that because it's so important. I mean that, man. If we're not careful, Instagram going to have all us thinking people starting a business on Monday and was a millionaire on Thursday because you saw one ad hey I want to show you how to make your business blow up by tomorrow click my ad and the reason they rich is because you clicked the ad so no we're not going to do that I'm going to show you practical steps on how to get it so I'm super duper excited to everybody watching because I get a lot of inboxes Pastor Mike I want to join the ministry no you don't you just want to come in here and have church on Sunday the people you see in this room our church hands down does not work without them be very clear our church would be functional without me you can find somebody to preach Uh, in my heart I believe it wouldn't be the same because you just what God put on my life but it would be something I mean that everybody has different anointings different oils but if you take the people in this room away it would be absolutely chaotic it's our Rockefellers our children's ministry our prayer team our experience department can we make some noise for the 12 in the room right there man 
Show them, Dre. They make us go unapologetically. Unapologetically, they make us go. So a couple things I want to talk about before I let you go today. I want you to be on the lookout. I'm getting ready to send a text blast out this week. We want some volunteers. We want to do an old school fashion church cleanup day. Is that okay? That's what we want to do, man. This building is so big and with just so much going on. We're paying crews to come in and do deep cleanings. But I also think, man, it'd just be a good team builder if we all come in and just vacuum something, clean something. We're going to need your help with that right there. I'm excited. Come on, clap your hands. Also, if you're interested in being a part of our facilities team, watch this, both volunteer and paid. So what we're realizing now is, I'm telling Tiffany, there are certain corners I don't want to cut. I want excellence. This building is too big for a company to clean up on Wednesdays. That's, we don't know who's using restrooms, who's doing what. I walked in here one day and downstairs smelled horrible. But the cleaning crew came, came on a Wednesday evening and somebody threw something away Thursday. It had been in there since Thursday. So I'm like, no, we need excellence. So we're getting ready to hire a facilities team. Uh, it would be like a maintenance person and a cleaning person and people who do this, do that. If you're watching online and you're interested in that, this week we're sending a text blast out. We also have a couple more positions that we're praying about hiring at our church. If you're interested in that, all of that will be in the email. Um, God's doing some incredible things here at Rock City Church, and we want to do things decent and in order also do me a favor i want to show some love and i mean this i slept on their impact but i'm starting to go different places that i thought was prestigious and when i'm talking to them they're not doing half of what we're doing rock city prep is incredible man i just want to praise god for them hear me when i say this i will put my kindergartners up against some of y'all third graders I'm t and that's a big statement, man, with Candace and Tina and Dr. Ware and Leslie and, um, and um, Perio and uh, Walt Broadnax. All of them are doing, it is Miss Andrea. It is so phenomenal. And I just, again, I don't like taking credit for stuff I don't do. Uh, I may influence it, but on a day-to-day -day level, that's them. That has nothing to do with me. They're doing a phenomenal job. So if you're listening right now, you're anywhere near Birmingham, and kindergarten through eighth grade, maybe your child doesn't learn at the pace that most people learn. They need personal attention. We could blow that school out the water right now and have 35, 40 kids in every class, but that's not the vision for it. It's for them to get personal attention. And the community-based teaching that they're doing is so phenomenal. Uh, I believe in your class is what grades? So we put kindergarten first and second in one room. So while we're teaching second, we're also bringing kindergarten up to their level. So it's blowing my mind how they're doing that. You see schools like Montessori schools and different schools doing different methods like this. I'm just uberly proud of them. I just want to tell y'all I'm proud of y'all for all that y'all are doing. I want to say thank you, and I'm talking more than I normally talk. I want to say thank you as well because some of us text uh, who texts, who gives like a dollar to the school every Tuesday or something? Like anybody? Well, what we do is if you text ROAR, R-O-A-R, -R, if you text 28 ROAR to 28950, you can give a donation to the school. So what I do is every Tuesday, I give $20 to the school. And let me show you what's happened. It's probably like 50 of us who do that. When they need supplies, when they need to go to schools, events, different like that, that's where they get it from. So it just blesses my life, man, to see all that they're doing. So I'm just so uberly excited. One more time. And we praise God for Rock City Prep, man. All right, y'all. Y'all be in prayer, man. One more inspection to go. I'm going to shoot that text message out. And then we're going to let God have his way. I need y'all praying. I think I'm going to change the service times when we come back, too. Uh, because 9 and 1030 is kind of squishing it. So I'm praying about like 9 and 11. That way it gives us enough time to clear everything out and do what we need to do. With that said, I love you. Don't forget, man, we're overly excited about Pastor James' new project, <laughs> Worth It. Who already paid for it? Throw your hand up. Who got it but you don't know you paid for it or not? I want you to go check that joint out. Do me a favor. When you go to bed tonight, turn it on and just cut your volume down. Just let it stream overnight. Let's help, man. Let's help make it do what it do. We certainly honor you. We thank God for you. Seeing all that God's doing in your life, we mean that, man, from the depths of our hearts. When we say we are Rock City, that's bigger than a building. It's a mantra that God's raising up a group of people that he can trust. And when he trusts us, he'll bless us. Somebody say amen.
Father God, our answer is yes. We agree corporately that there is more in store, more in us, and more that you want to do through us. Now, God, I pray a special prayer. Your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. I love you so much. We are. We'll see you next week. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. That was an incredible word. Powerful. Yes. Listen, yes. it has been declared that it is our winning season, Definitely. that everything attached to us in, in community with us yes. wins. And so everything. we thank God for using our man of God yes, yes. Uh, to, to share a word in such a way that will totally revolutionize mm -hmm. our life. And so maybe you heard that word yes. and you want to make a decision to tell God yes for the first time. Or yes. maybe you're telling God yes again. again. And and he said, listen, I stand at the door and I knock, but the day you hear my voice, harden yes. not your heart. And so that knock that you're hearing, that voice that you're hearing, listen, mm. that is God. That's the Holy Spirit yes. speaking to you. And you can come back home. Come home. Just text the word home to 28950. Yes. And so not only can you text the word home, but this might also be a great opportunity for you to get seed in the ground. In the ground. When you hear a word like that, mm. you want to mark it, you want to claim it, right. and you want want to be able to say, God, I am planting a seed, believing mm -hmm. that somebody's going to water and you're ultimately going to give increase to it. So Definitely. you want to talk a little bit about how they can the give. The information's on the there screen, but you can text IROC yep. and the amount you wish to give to 28950. Trust me, you're sowing into good yes. ground. We're reaching out to the communities. We're reaching out to the nations. Yes. So this is a great ground. It's going to grow. You're going to see it grow. Absolutely. And we, we've already begun to see it grow, Definitely. right? Devo Energy, Monday through Friday, we're touching yes. lives all around the, the world. world and that doesn't happen without you having the courage to yes. commit so uh, commit so stay committed stay committed stay locked in y'all mm -hmm. because also we know that very soon very soon you're gonna get those two words it's right it's and you don't want to miss it we don't want to say them yet though we can't say we can't say it on screen but look we will <laughs> see you bright and early 721 for d energy <laughs> so on behalf of pastor mike lady j and all of us here at rock Nation. We love you. Stay blessed. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.